How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Yes, things are good. Firstly, thank you for your time. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. Not at all. As always, our student ambassador uh, group and team and members are always more than willing. So um, looking forward to speaking a little bit around your course. Um, there is a Q&A function on the screen as well. So do, if you're watching this live, use that and ask any questions. And I have no doubt that Louise would be happy to take any questions. And if you're watching this on record, um, studenthelp at dcu.ie, you'll get us on that anytime if you'd like to chat and hear more um, about everything. So firstly, I guess it's it's at the start. How has the last couple of months been? And then we'll jump into the course. How are you getting on at the moment? It's been unusual. So it has, can't say it's been like anything that we've had before, but we're sort of now, because we had the online learning back in March, just sort of knew what you were getting yourself in for. And I actually find that I've been paying a lot more attention um, in lectures because you've not got so much distractions. And um, the socialising part is hard, but I've actually found the online learning pretty easy. You adapted quite well, which lots of people seem to have done so. I think the DCU um, model that they had pretty much changed overnight. They went to a, obviously an online learning system, which is, for those that are watching this, we use a, a place called uh, DCU Loop, which is effectively a kind of a one-stop shop where all the lecturers interact and put up quizzes and message and you can talk to um, staff and you can talk to students and so on. But you got on all right. Yeah, I find, because sometimes I find like, I'm not busy taking notes and not necessarily listen to the next thing in lectures. So I've loved that we've had them recorded. So I watch them live and then go back and watch them again. So that helps me like just take in all the information that, um, that the lectures are talking about. Yeah, it's interesting. I guess lots of people are, are finding that some is obviously finding it challenging being from their Wi-Fi and their different places where they're located and different things. But but I guess all in all, it does seem. Let's start, if we can, at your journey to DCU and I guess coming into the program, finding out about the program, finding out about the university, um, I guess. So maybe let's start there and then we'll work our way into the course and what it's all about. OK, so I well, I'm from Belfast, so we don't like we do the UCAS application. CAO was never mentioned in school. Um, and for me, like even though Queens and Jordanstown are local to me, they just didn't appeal. Um, so I went one day and Googled universities in the South and DCU come up and I was like, oh, this place looks interesting. And it's the closest, it's the first one past the border. So I was like, okay, so it's not too far from home. Um, and I initially did the business program, but I did two years of that. But I found it just, it wasn't for me. Um, I was sort of struggling along. So I decided to take a year out. And then, so I took a year out. I did a couple of different things, a couple of different courses. And then I came back in 2018 to do international relations. And honestly, that changing was the best decision I ever made because I was struggling along, sort of getting about a third, two, two in business, whereas now I'm getting two, one first in in IR. That journey or decision to come from Belfast down, what in terms of research and given gave what gave you, I guess, the the comfort to know this is the place? Was it open days? Was it talking to students? Was it social media? A bit of everything in terms of finding out about it initially? Um for the for a couple of weeks I was sort of on the website nearly every day just researching about it constantly. And whenever I came in, whenever I came down for the open day in 2014 it would have been and mm -hmm. um, my mom says that she knew straight away as soon as we drove in that gate with the big DCU sign she said my face changed and she knew that this was the place for me I just um I just had a feeling like I was home if that makes sense like I was just like this is where I'm meant to be this is where I'm supposed to go and um I sort of knew from that open day that yes, this was the place where I wanted to go. And then I talked to quite a few of the student ambassadors at the time about the university. And they were like, oh, it's brilliant. Like you'll have such a good time down here. Everyone's so friendly. And um, I always remember Jack Butterly um, talking to me and he was like, oh, don't, this place is amazing. I love it so much. And I was like, I love it. I have to go here. 
And then that's also what inspired me to be a student ambassador as well. Um, just sort of to spread his enthusiasm. It's amazing um, how it all comes full circle. Sorry, I cut you yeah, off. No, that was, that, was, that was the end of that, yeah. It's amazing how it all does come full circle. And now we'll talk about you being a student ambassador. Try capture, if you can, I know it's difficult because I think I, I know the space you're getting and it's often hard to describe. Try capture for me or for those that are listening more so, that kind of feeling of, I knew this is the place or I knew this is the one, was it... Was it just a feeling? Was it something in particular, a person? Was it Jack? Was it the buildings, the size, the letters? Um, I think it was the letters at the start because I had been to quite a few university open days and I think because it, it was something new and because it was so modern as well, like Queen's, everybody knows it's a very old building. Jordanstown, again, it's pretty old, whereas DCU is very modern. And as soon as I drove in, I was like, wow. And what I really loved was the size of the campus. So like as the ones at home, they're all spread out, they're massive, whereas DCU's like, it's quite compact. And the Glasnevin campus, and then of course, Pat's and All Hallows are not very far away. So I liked that everything was really close together. And like, because you have the accommodation, the shops, the gyms, the U, everything is so close. Like you could just, you could live on campus without ever leaving for a year easily. And I really liked that. Um, and the, like the friendly family atmosphere, like people look out for you at DCU, which is something that I hadn't noticed at other universities. And that's something that I particularly liked. It's great to hear that journey and just in particular the insights. That's why I wanted to um, push it a little bit. And we're nearly 10 minutes. We haven't got into the course yet, but I do want to ask you one more thing because we'll, we'll come around to the course and we'll, we'll cover everything anyway. Around that research element, I know right now, depending on if you're watching this live, you're watching this back, it's currently November the 25th. So right now, being physically there on campus for an open day or visiting isn't, um, I guess we don't have the ability to do that, but hopefully very, very soon we will. That, that, that ability to go on campus would you have made the decision if you hadn't to come to campus? Was it that important to get there and to see it and to feel it and to really try to get a sense uh, physically being there? I think for me, it did help. But I even before I came to the campus, I had my heart set on DCU. Like as soon as I saw the courses online and especially for now coming around to, to change the course to do international relations, it's the only one in Ireland that does that course. So I think before, like from the research I'd done, like I was on the website nearly every day, Facebook, Twitter, all of them constantly. Um, like I had sort of had my heart set on DCU from, from the start, but I have been like, my sister has been looking at DCU. She's, she's only 14, but she's getting her, she's getting her ideas sorted already. And we watched the, um, the virtual tour video online yesterday and the new one on YouTube and even if you can't visit the campus, like it's a fantastic video, shows you around, shows you everything. So if you can't make it on campus, like I would watch that. Yeah, and th thanks for mentioning. There is a full, I think it's about eight or nine minutes, uh, virtual tour of all of our campuses. And then there's a series of mini campus tour videos that we have as well. So if you're watching this either now live or, or watching this back on record, um, you can find us, find them on our dcu.e forward slash cao. Um, hub page there so plenty of resource online right okay let's get into the course because we're supposed to, to be talking about the course so um, you mentioned your journey to DCU you then change into IOR into international relations what is the course all about and give us a, a helicopter view and then we might get inside the classroom and some of the modules so I always sort of describe it as world politics world events like we, it's not just about Ireland um or the Irish political system, though we do cover that. Like if you're interested in loads of different things like the US elections, the conflict in Armenia that's happening at the minute, um, sort of no matter what you're interested in, it's usually got a module to cover that. So I find we kind of, it's sort of like politics, sociology, a little bit of history, um, world events and affairs, sort of things like that so if you like sort of keeping up to date with the news it's an ideal course is it a big course from a, a student population point of view 
Um, no, my class has 55 people. So it has, so it's relatively small. And then we would have, because there's two different streams, languages and international relations, you'd have classes of maybe about 20, 30 people. And sometimes they're even smaller for like the languages and stuff. Maybe you have 10 people. So like I know everybody um, and I'm friendly with everybody, know them all by name. Um, so it's not like you're going into a particularly big classroom. If you're coming from, say, um, second level school, whatever it might be, how would, so, like, do they have to do particular subjects? Is there a particular subjects that you would say, if you really liked history, yes, this is something, or is, is it something that you can kind of come into it with? It starts from the ground and you work your way up. And if you have an interest in the space in general, or is it a subject kind of related space you have to have particular interest in? Um, so you don't have to have like any particular subjects. Um, I did, for my A-levels, I did, politics, sociology and business. So I do find that for me, the politics and sociology does help, but I know a lot of schools in the South don't offer this. Um, I would say the main thing is you need to have an interest in what's going on in the world now. So if you're not interested in listening to the news and things like that, then it's maybe not the course for you. But if you like to keep up to date with what's happening in the world, um, sort of modern history, things like that then it is a very good course to do is it three years or four years it is could be either three or four so the year i started 2018 was the first year we introduced erasmus and intra so um there was supposed to be quite a few of my course were supposed to go away this year unfortunately they should be going away next year fingers crossed um but i i chose to do the three years but you can do the four years as well uh, if you're to go on Erasmus and you might know the answer to this necessarily, but where can you go or is there options? Yeah, so you can go because you can study French, Sp- Spanish or German. We have partners in French, France, Spain and Germany. And there is also ones in Holland and China, as far as I know, that you could go to as well. Well, dynamic, I'd say that would be an um, experience, obviously, COVID aside, that uh, I'm sure lots of students will and continue to take. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of then, so that was a little bit about the program. In terms of then to say like contact hours, kind of lectures or, or modules per semester, what's sort of the weight around there? So we do about 10 modules each semester, eight, eight to 10. Um, and we, so we have five each semester and about 10 hours. So this semester we've had a little bit more because we've had tutorials, but they're not every week. Um, So we have a basis of 10 hours every week and then maybe an extra hour or two on certain weeks, depending on when our tutorials are. So there's not a huge amount of classroom time, um, but you would have like a fair bit of reading. This year I've had quite a few weekly assignments just to, for things to keep on on top of so um even though you maybe don't have a huge amount of classroom time there is always work to keep on top of i, I know right now it's online but i guess if you can give us a sense of so if i wasn't if i was in the course or came into the course and i, I don't know i didn't understand something or i wasn't getting on great with a subject or whatever it may be give us a sense of maybe just some of, you know, can you go to lectures? Are they there in terms of support? Is there, as you mentioned, tutorials? If, if you're struggling in any way from a classroom point of view, um, what are some of the opportunities or some of the outlets you can go to for help? Yeah, so for me this year, um, nearly every module has a tutorial, which is helpful because then you can ask questions, you can clarify things. Um, over, over this year and the last two years, the lecturers generally have two hours a week set aside. Some of them are in two hour blocks. Some of them are an hour in different days. You can call up to them. You don't have to make an appointment or anything. And you can discuss any issues that you're having, um, like whether you don't understand things and they can explain it. Or um, like if you need help with an assignment or things like that, they'll give you a hand. And because it's got such a small, classroom group as well um it's very easy to keep in contact with everyone so if you don't understand something someone generally will 
so people are always open to they're always able to help you you know you'll say they'll, I've had times where there's been maybe five or six of us we've all went to the library sat together and went through a subject so some people understand things more than others so we'll all help each other yeah, it's good to know because some people might be thinking, yes, this is definitely for me, but I'm just a little unsure. Or I think I might struggle or so I just wanted to touch on that. Um, so we have about 10 or 12 minutes left or so. Um, want to talk a little bit around outside the classroom, what you get up to, opportunities in that space. And we might then touch on being a student ambassador, kind of maybe to bring it full circle to close out. But outside the classroom, what goes on? What are you getting up to? How do you feel and spend your time? Um, so I am involved in the DCU Archery Club. And um, so I am both a committee member and a competitive team member. So I last year I was the inclusivity officer and this year I am the events officer, which has been a bit of a joke so far because we haven't had any events and we were supposed to have a competition. I think it was supposed to be this weekend, but that obviously didn't happen. Um, so that is something I've been involved in. And then from that, I have went to competitions in Dublin, Maynooth, Cork. We were supposed to go to Galway, but unfortunately that didn't happen as well. The COVID's not great for archery, um, but it's been really good. Like I've made loads of new friends. I've learned loads of new skills as well. I had quite a few injuries, but that's um, part of the part of it. Um, but I've had a fantastic time doing that. When, when I ask the question um, over the last kind of seven, six, seven episodes to all various different students, different programs, what was the one piece of advice you'd give yourself? By and large, it comes back to get involved, do something, don't be afraid, put yourself forward, you know, just try it once at least and, and you'll probably like it after that. Archery, you always were into it. You tried it once and you never looked back. Um, how did you get into that space? Um, so... It's sort of funny because I said at the start of second year that I wanted to get into a sport. And then the about two days before the semester started, I fell at the Gents Causeway and broke my leg. So I was I was in crutches and about so anything that involved running or jumping or things like that, it was out. I couldn't couldn't get involved in any sports. And my mum had seen on the Instagram stories about there being archery and she says why don't you why don't you sign up for that because um you loved the hunger games when you were younger and you don't have to move so I said right I'll, I'll go and I'll, I'll give it a go and I had such a great time the first lesson that I was like yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna stay at that and um, because it sort of became a, a, a running joke over I was inclusivity officer because I was I was the one on the crutches, and um, you know we had we had a great laugh about me being like, you know, the one person who started archery on like one leg and then having to switch and learn my balance all over again. So yeah, I basically joined that because of a broken leg. Well, like and lots of people do do what you did and don't come back or it's not for them but I guess it's 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 interesting and it's great to hear you stay and just a fantastic uh I guess reports and and memories and experiences and long may they continue as well and no, no doubt beyond the university life as such as well in terms of lifelong friends so clubs and societies for those that aren't quite sure um exactly how to get into them essentially in your first couple of days when you come uh, the university this year is online but uh, you have a kind of a clubs and socks week if you like and you can join as many or as little as you want but they're all there and you can speak to people like louise who are in different uh, spaces and get and get a good sense of so you're watching this back uh, that's kind of how they work and how you get involved and as louise is describing there you can get involved in different positions to accelerate um to accelerate your personal development so we have a couple of minutes left i want to try maybe just get into kind of because when when you listen to students or when you talk to students like yourself and um, they always see it or, you know they're the true sense of what goes on so i want to try get tips is probably the wrong word but just different insights so something that a student should know if they're looking at doing international relations anything that jumps to mind you should know this or make sure you go to campus or whatever the piece of advice might be anything jump to mind and um, the one thing that I would say, and I would give this advice to anybody looking at going to university, is really do your research. 
on the course try and talk to people so um like you can email student help at dcu.ie and they can put you in touch with us um like we have the blogs and things as well and what i like about tcu is that they have all the modules online so you can um go and see what modules you're doing over each year so i think really research your course because um like having the first thing i would say for myself is when i initially started i researched the university a lot but not necessarily the course whereas the second time around i made sure i really knew the course i knew it practically inside out i could tell you what modules i was going to be doing in final year before i'd even started so just make sure that you know ex have a good look at what you're going to be doing because you might want to do something and you look at the modules and you're like actually this isn't really for me and um sort of just give yourself a clear idea of what you're interested in like i know it's something different for this for the cao than the ucas but you have 10 options and i know people sometimes feel like they have to fill in all of those options but if you know that you can like try your best and get into somewhere you'd be better um maybe not filling up with unnecessary options because you, then you might end up in one of those but really try hard to get into like your top three and something that i did again this is um sort of a open day thing but um you could do it at home was i had got a gcu wristband um Whereas now that there's pens and there's phone holders and things, I had a DC wristband and a cutout from the first page of the prospectus. So I wore this wristband every day and I had the prospectus up, the front page of the prospectus. And I looked at it every single day and I was like, this is what I'm working for. This is what I'm putting the work in for. Like I found that really motivated me because it gave me an end goal through the really tough days was even though things were, were really bad or I was struggling, I was doing this to get to DCU. Yeah, well, it's good to, and obviously people come through, come or get to university in many different routes. Some come back as a mature student, some come from transferring, some come directly in and they're happy. And that's that's such sound advice to to provide somebody else or a tip, if you like, or an insight that if you're, if you're lacking at times, which we all do, motivation or you have different challenges and whatever it may be, having that end point in mind or having a visible as you had, um, it's just a sound piece of advice. Anything, um, I want to wrap up kind of in this space because I think it's so important that when people listen to these conversations, they're pretty much where you were, where I was or anyone else was a couple of years ago and haven't gone through it. Um, pitfalls or challenges or anything or anything like that. Any advice you'd give yourself, generally speaking? Um, so not necessarily to do with coming to DCU or the course, but maybe it is. But any advice that you give yourself again? So um, there's a quote that I kind of live by. It's from the musical Hamilton, and it's "I am not standing still. I am lying in wait." And and it's basically for me. It means. I've had opportunities pass me by. I've had things not work out, but just because they've passed me by, they obviously weren't meant at the time. So I'm not standing still waiting for them. I'm lying in wait for them, the right thing. I'm waiting for the right thing to come to me rather than letting the things that weren't for me pass me by. I, I don't think I should attempt a bit like the last conversation with you. I don't think I should attempt to try and uh, top that, that. That's that's brilliant, and it's it's really a a poignant way I think to finish the conversation um, or to kind of wrap up the conversation. Just let people know that are watching this live or coming back in watching this on record. So just as uh, Louise mentioned already. Um, our student ambassadors, as Louise is, are always willing to help out. I don't know many people you've spoken to, a bit like Jack Butterly, that you said you spoke when you came to DCU initially. I'm sure you've spoken to maybe hundreds of people on email or face to face, or maybe thousands at this stage. But so if you are listening to this back at any point, student help at dcu.ie. Um, and I know Louise and her her colleagues and student ambassador team, as well as every other staff member, will be uh, only too happy to help. I just want to thank you for your time and your insights. As always, uh, very much appreciated. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Louise. And we'll chat soon. Stay safe. Yeah, thanks.